Welcome to the Open Mic Podcast. It's Cinco de Mayo and there's killer hornets everywhere. We're gonna die. <laughs> That's I can do that. You can't. I'm Mexican. Okay. You're Italian. <laughs> Sorry. But let me be Italian. Let me like play with a baby and gravy and then we'll trade off race stuff. Fair enough. <laughs> no, I wanted to do it too. You did it. No. You, know, you know, funny thing is I found out I'm actually not Italian with a 23 in me. I always thought I was, but I'm not. So what are you? I'm Ukrainian. Gross. Yeah. Ew. Well, we don't celebrate you at all. So. Yeah, I'm like Eastern European, like br- fucking lived in probably... Bratislava. Oh, that shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's Jason. He just said hi to you guys, everybody. Today we have special guest Caitlin Hasenauer. Ha- has Hasenauer? Did I say her? <laughs> I always trip over your name or feel like I'm gonna. Yeah, no, everyone does. It's a uh, Hasenauer. Hasenauer? Hasenauer. Yeah. Uh, it has an R like at the a, end of yeah. it. Like it has, like, an, like, it has that's an R. A, that's how I tell everyone at open mics how to say it, and it's so fun watching them like on the side of the stage, the host just being like, has an R, has an R, has an R, and they go up and they're like, Caitlin has some, ah, fuck, bring up Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> has some letter. Yeah. Yeah. Caitlin has an hour to teach me how to say her fucking name. <laughs> I thought it was good. Fuck you, Jason. I was laughing. <laughs> on the Don't worry. No, let's do a shot at Cinco de Mayo. I got us a bottle of tequila. Let's do our uh, first shot. And Cheers. it's Taco Tuesday. Anybody need salt? How about that? Lime Taco Tuesday there. and Cheers. Cinco de Mayo. I'll say it a third time. Taco Tuesday and Cinco de Mayo. But yeah, so there's coronavirus is going on. Now there's killer hornets. What, what's next in this form of control? Is it sexual assault robots? Are there going to be rape bots on the street? A rape bot? Yeah, now you can't fucking clean your house because your vacuum's going to rape you? What's next? What's going to happen? Well, they're trying to get Roomba faces. Like, oh, yeah. so you can pick out your assailant in the lineup. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so that would feel like if you're a woman with a dress, like the Roomba's always like going under you and smiling. Like, yeah. Hey. Yeah, you see its little pupils go up. <laughs> <laughs> you can put eyelashes on it. So you, can, yeah, you see two camera lens just open on the top of it and one of them winks at you? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the zoom in. The zoom in Roomba. I don't know. Whatever. Zumba. Yeah. That's the man. That's what Zumba is. It's just a bunch of robots. robots. They take pictures of girls. Hitting each other on the floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but who's, watch, not, who's watching it on the other side? Yeah. Well, they're not running into each other. They're having sex. That's how robots do it. They're oh. practicing for us. <gasps> Fuck, it's been here the whole time. Oh, no. It's been a simulation. Yeah. So you, this is all funny until we all get canceled for predicting that this was going to happen. I, I'll i never get canceled because I'll never make it, so I don't have to worry about it. I think Same. there's a couple of black trucks pulling up out front. <laughs> when you said black... It's a, a horde of Zumba's coming out. <laughs> Zumba's got here at Rupa's. When he said black, I was so glad he said trucks after that. <laughs> <laughs> he got quiet now. He's like, ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a 10 second. Uh, how long have you been doing comedy, Caitlin? Uh, it would have been three years this month. Would have been. You said that like it's a, like, how old's your mom? Oh, she would have been mm-hmm. 45, but yeah. she died. So <laughs> may, I, may I ask then, so that when it does fire back up, so you'll have still, you, and somebody says, how long have you been doing comedy? You'll say, well, I'm, I've still been doing it for two, year, uh, two years and, like, 11 months. Oh, yeah. If I can definitely get away with it, I'll say I've been doing it less time just so people get more and more impressed if I am. Yeah. <laughs> just like, I've only been doing it for two years. You've had... Four Netflix specials and <laughs> it's just like two years. That's all it was. There you go. See, I think that's the thing. That's a, a common mistake because I did it too when I was newer. People always want to say they've been doing it longer, but you don't realize until later. Like shit, if I actually say how long I've been doing it, people are gonna be like, "Why haven't you done more with yourself? You're, yeah. you're behind." So I, I'd rather say less time. But I just I'm truthful whenever people ask me because I've accomplished so much, I don't have to worry about it. Absolutely. Yeah. See, that's I, sarcasm, everybody. <laughs> I haven't done shit, so I've. Like, I debated about, like, uh, taking six months off because it took about six months before I actually started taking it seriously and going to mics every single week and all that fun stuff. Then I was like, fuck it, no, if people think you're bad for three years, then get better for three years. Like, yeah, it's kind of motivation, but being kind of also just like, you suck for three years. Yeah, well, you just took a break for six months (laughs) because of Corona. We all did. We had to. Yeah, I, I definitely I miss it like crazy. That's why I'm glad I have this to just incessantly talk over people who can't respond to me for an hour. So, yeah. but you you had actually I was going to talk to you about this. You had just gotten your first uh, club dates too, right before coronavirus, and your own Larry David kind of moment, right? Yeah. When were the dates for? Uh, I hadn't actually gotten them from Perio yet, uh, or. I don't care. Yeah, okay. Um, he hadn't told me. He was like, "You're going to get them probably late April." Is yeah. when. So That's you the last. you probably would have got him like last week at the open mic or something because he's he he's pretty organized and he usually like when he says something like that I'm sure he has like nine calendars and fourteen different reminders to let him know I have to do this. Yeah. Um, he, yeah. he was always like he, he told me the last time I saw him he was just like I'm gonna give you dates soon like I'll tell you whatever, um, and then 
Yeah, Corona happened. I was like, well, I guess I'm not getting fucking dates. <laughs> that, like, stopped yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I everybody, and I'm not going to say I lost a whole bunch. I lost some money from it, uh, but um, there's, I mean, there's comics out there that lost a lot more than I did. I mean, I maybe lost, like, $1,000 total, and that's, like, over the span of, like, from when it started to now, and that's, like, a more, that's a few weekends, but it's not a ton. I'm not, like, going around, like, oh, I lost $1,000. I just wish I could get on stage again. Well, I, what I think is bad about it is the fact that we talked about this off air, I think, recently or the, after the last show, is that when it all does fire back up, what sucks is that all the comedians probably are losing their spots and dates and all that because of other people that are getting fired up on coming through. Yeah, and I, I think what will happen is, and I've read a few things that people have sent me and, and that I've seen online, is that when something like this happens, this is their prediction, is that you take these bigger comics, like we'll just say, just for the sake of everybody knowing the name, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan had all these dates booked for all these theaters and stuff, and those dates are booked like a year out in advance. He loses those, and when the, everything opens up and he's able to go back to those theaters, he still has to schedule that for like a year out or so. So in that meantime, they'll go to I bet they'll go to these clubs that are like B clubs and C clubs where they normally wouldn't go, and because they'll make a deal with the door guy, well not the door guy, but with the owner or whoever books that club, and they'll make more they'll make more money than what they normally pay people, but those clubs are happy to book someone like that because he's going to sell out however many shows he chooses to do there if it's five if it's ten yeah they so, want to recoup anything that they lost exactly the biggest yeah. names in there and then and then the messed up part is go with their terms probably them bringing their people exactly their openers yeah. their head. I feel like yeah. people like like me and you that like just open at clubs and I, I feature sometimes but either way I feel like a lot of these guys are going to bring their own friends who are also hurting and need work uh, which I understand. I'm not like knocking it, but I wish they would like understand. Like, hey, these newer guys. The reason we're not friends yet is because you never worked with me. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we wouldn't be friends because you'd hate me either way. Because I'm pretty terrible and annoying. But. But at the same time, though, like I kind of like it's a double edged sword. Uh, it sucks that they're going to be bringing people and like comics like us that are rely on you not bringing someone with you. Uh, it's like if. Big names like Joe Rogan can come to Hyenas and the Improv and stuff like that and get them their money back as fast as possible uh, from, like, what they're losing on being closed for however long. Like, that'll help them out. And in the long run, that'll help us out. Like, we're not yeah. going to lose any clubs to perform at. We're not going to lose, uh, like, that space to perform. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I'm saying. It's I, I can't knock it because it's also a good thing because they need to make their money, too. I mean... Mm -hmm. Of course, I want to be involved in that. And y'all don't feel pressure to take a shot now if y'all don't want. I just felt like I was like, well, yeah. So. Well, good. I, that's why I just handed the bottle over and, like, didn't say anything. Like, it's just, just like the, the joint in the, the rotation. It's like, yeah. you don't want it. Don't make a big deal. Just pass it yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Just don't, don't fucking, don't rock the boat here. All can, right? I, can I make a statement right quick? You can make it two statements if you want. Okay, well, I'll start with one. And, you know, since I'm not a comic or a comedian that goes to any of these clubs, I mean, I, I have no bias and a certain connection to anything that I say following this statement, um, is that, and I'll try not to fuck up your guys' chances as well. But I, but I think it's kind of fucked up that if, you know, when this scenario that you're saying does happen and these bigger guys will come through and bring their people and stuff. Okay, so two statements. So the first one is going to be... It. So the first one's going to be, that's kind of fucked up on the club's part because the club should already have their loyalty to their regular bread and butter, mm -hmm. which is you guys that are there all the fucking time. All the fucking time, no matter what. Waiting, standing, losing opportunities, Spending getting money opportunities. Spending money at that bar every week. Scratching, the mic. fucking surviving. Just hanging in a child life. <laughs> you know, all that shit, yeah. But, <laughs> hey, <try not> to <laughs> but, they're, but, they're, but they're not showing you guys love back like they should be. Point one. Point two, these comedians coming back through, they should fucking remember when they were at the same spot that you guys and the locals, the people at the local stage were at, and they should remember that, hey, man, I know these guys need to fucking get some work, too. Yeah. Yeah, my whole thing with that, the clubs, they don't have to show loyalty to anyone. Like, in my opinion, I could be wrong. Like, I'm newer. But, like... And I didn't you, say they have to. I said... They don't have to. I said it's fucked up they don't. That they don't. But at the same time, it's like, how many people are in C's right now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's... I, it's I, a double-edged sword. Like you said, 
I, I of course I would love that that loyalty, but I also understand the business. And I mean to get someone big like that into some of these clubs, it's their terms. These headliners set their terms, and if I ever make it to that level, I'll be able to set my own terms. I don't feel like the club owes me anything. Yeah, I'll, I'll do anything they ask of me. I always show up. I do my job. I'll spend money at the bar. I support and all that. But I don't feel like they owe me anything because I've gotten a lot. All the stage time I've gotten from a lot of these clubs, it's invaluable. You can't put a price of money on it. And I know that sounds like the political answer, and I'm just shoving their cock in the back. I'm, I'm already thinking of this message approved by Mike <laughs> so he can get message, no, so he can get work for 2020, it, please. It is kind of it is kind of <laughs> fucked up that they don't. Show that loyalty, but I understand it's the business. That's just the way it is. And the people that get caught up on that stuff, because I see plenty of open micers that they get a couple of bar gigs and they think they should be working the club and they think that somebody owes them something. Nobody owes you a goddamn thing. These people that own these businesses, they can do whatever the fuck they want with them, just like if you started a business. That's just what it is. And, I mean, those are the terms that are set. And if that's what it is, I whether I agree with it or not, that's the game you have to play to get in there. And you just have to remember that it's not all just... I'm funny. I have a hit. Put me out there. And so you're basically metaphorically taking your licks. That's what yeah. it is. Earn your stripes, bro. Put your fucking work in. I've lost plenty of shit I shouldn't have lost. I've had been through a lot of that shit. It's just what it is. And, like, on your second point, though, like, uh, them remembering where they came from. Here we go. Uh, okay. My thing, yes, they should do that. It would be great if they could remember what it was like to be at the open mics. But <laughs> at the same time, when hopefully when I make it big, like, I've started comedy uh, with Anthony, and me and him have always, like, had that comedy duo kind of thing of if he makes it before me, like, I know he's going to, like, help me yeah. out by giving me features and doing stuff like that and vice versa with him. <laughs> I'm I'm going to think of my friend Anthony who is going to open for me if I go to this club if I'm big one day before I think of the little guy that's just starting out that kind of thing. Yeah. That's my view on it, and if you're friends with Joe Rogan, like, there's a reason you're friends with Joe Rogan. You want to get some fucking stage yeah. time and get and, paid. Well, not just that. I mean, <laughs> it might just be a friendship, because I'm friends with Anthony, too, and I've seen his act. He'll definitely be opening for you. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually going to have him on in the next week or so. <laughs> but, uh... That was being very yeah. kind. Yeah, yeah, he's you're very like, kind. <laughs> yeah. He's like, fuck Caitlin, fuck her. We're not doing shit together now. <laughs> but, no, I, I do agree with you, like, where they, they should remember, like, hey, I didn't know these guys till they opened for me or whatever, and I think that would be great. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and bitch and moan. I'm going to keep grinding and keep working and get to the point where it's undeniable that when they need somebody, they have to book you. Like, yeah. they know that you're available, you're funny, you're the guy. They can't really deny. They can't just... The only reason they wouldn't give you the... I want to be to that point. I'm not saying I'm there, but I want to be to that point where they think twice for not booking me for personal reasons. Because yeah. I've been through that kind of pol political stuff, and it's that's just the way entertainment in general is, is done with music, with comedy, with everything. Yeah, and, like, because I was listening... Uh, I don't remember which episode it was, uh, but y'all talked about uh, getting gigs, and you said that, like, you don't want to do favors to get... like giving Butch a ride. Yeah. Like, you don't want to get a show off of giving him a ride or that bit of exactly. reason. Um, but you have heard the benefit and the drawbacks from it. Yeah. Yeah. Micah's had benefits. <laughs> yours were more drawbacks. Yeah. yeah I've mine, had both. Yeah. Uh, mine was a benefit. Like, I used to do the same thing. I'd get <laughs> Butch a ride. Everybody like, a Butch a ride. <laughs> Anybody who's been at the same open mic he was at ever. Uh, if you have a car, you've been at the same open mic, you've given Butch did, a ride somewhere. Let me ask you, did you take his class, too? Uh, I got I took his free class, not the one you pay for. Yeah, the free class is the one they make you. It's just a one class where they teach you the hosting stuff you need. But yeah. I did the pay class when I was new because I figured even if I don't learn anything, at least the guy who does who at least at that time did the booking for the clubs knows who I am now. For sure. Like, oh yeah, he'll remember me because I gave him some money. But also, I, I pulled back from like doing favors and and a ride stuff like and that. I picked him up drunk and he yeah. puked on himself and he pe no he yeah. probably didn't mm -hmm. do any of that. No, he didn't. No, Bush can hold his shit. Trust me, he okay. didn't puke on himself at all. Well, he's not listening anyway. So. Yeah. yeah, nobody is. So we're yeah. just doing this for us. We're the only ones that listen Basically. to this. I enjoy the episodes. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope love so. listening back to them. <laughs> I hope so. You, can't, you and Caitlin are our only listeners, and we're all here in the room. <laughs> I'm definitely going to listen so. to this one one or two I times. I was yeah. super so. happy to hear that you said that you, you referenced a couple of episodes already. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Jason's glowing right now. Yeah. <laughs> and Let's you're do a shot. Fan. I'm so remember, glad to be on. I don't remember seeing a like or a follower or a subscribe from you, though. I subscri subscribed, but I didn't. You got to like and follow. Okay. Well, I, just, I, don't, I don't know. I'll leave a comment. No, I'm just okay, kidding. I'll leave a yeah. comment. I'm on this show. <laughs> Listen. So let's um, move it forward. Jason, do you have some creative questions or some questions for Caitlin or both of us? Yeah, I do. Okay, so this is going to be for both of you. 
and I thought of this after I thought of this after the uh, the show last week. We were talking about something, and it just kind of sparked something that I thought about. So if you could, um, if you can kill someone, like a simulated kill, like they'd come back to life, they're totally fine. That's fine. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Person you don't know, or it could be a person that you know. Whatever the story is, how would you do it? How would you do it? Not yeah. who would it be? No. How would you do it? How would you kill them? What would satisfy your urge to want to find out what it feels like? To Kill. How many chances of this do I have? Because one, just one, Fuck. one time. Uh, you got to spend oh. your one fantasy kill. How would you do it? Fuck. I don't know. I I kind of want to use a gun, but I think like I want to get the most out of this interaction. So I might stalk my prey. I kind of would want to use a knife, but I feel like that would fuck me up later on. Because I'd get addicted to it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just remember, like I was thinking more stuff. like if you cut them or something, like they might bleed out before your like ultimate like show is done. See, I'd like to go John Wick style through a warehouse and just kill a bunch of bad guys. But realistically, I'll be winded after the first two and be like, all right, simulation over. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I want to throw someone off a building. And I want to say something cool when I do it, too. Just have the full push and watch them go down splat? Not the push. I want to, like, shove them off a building and be like, how's the breeze, asshole? (laughs) See, that would be too much pressure. You'd be, like, thinking about everything you want to say, and then you'd pick the worst one right as they're falling. You'd be like, fuck, I had so many cooler things to say before they fell off the building. Well, because the cool thing to think about is that if this person actually doesn't die, they're going to, like, totally roast you over some stupid shit. Yeah, they'll be like, how's the breeze, asshole? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? This one, no, I didn't go down like that. Let me tell you what he fucking said. He was a bitch. (laughs) 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 He was like, dummies throwing them off buildings, like, doing different things. Catchphrases just. Yeah, I'll get some people, mannequins and practice first. And people practice. are walking around, they're like, no, Mike said he said some cool shit. You're like, no, you fucking didn't. He fucking said some <laughs> dumbass shit. I'd like to push him off the building and be like, I don't have an Uncle Jerry. <laughs> what does that mean? Boom. Like, remember that video we did with your son? We yes. did a bunch of taglines. It was like dramatic reveal, like the. The garage door comes up, and then you say, like, I would turn and say something like, one of them was like, pancakes are for pussies. It was just dumb shit. Like, <laughs> Super strange. And we broke yeah. the garage door to where we had to actually, like, have someone lift it. Physically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then we had, like, a little funny parody at the end of some conversations. <laughs> it was actually a funny video. Yeah. I, I, would, I, I said it only rains diamonds and pearls on Jupiter and Saturn. No, I looked that up. Yeah. It only it only rains uh, diamonds on Jupiter and Mars. And Mars. And hippo milk is pink. That was one of the ones. Yeah. I, I, I remember. Okay. I like that you found Fact check all yeah. of these things. I well, did. No, we're not going to just sit here and say some stupid shit for the sake no, of stupid I, shit. I am. I will. Well, but you fact checked it. Yeah, I know. That way I can make After it even stupider. <laughs> <laughs> so stupider. You can do it on yeah. <laughs> how, how would you kill somebody? Uh, I would be. I would beat someone up to death as long as they you couldn't beat someone to death with, yeah, your, with someone, your hands, with your yes, bare hands, bare hands, just take out yeah. all of my anger and frustration. Because I remember there was like one time I was at a bar, I'd been drinking a little bit, and this chick pissed me off to the point where you're just like pacing for no reason. You're just like off, oh, like she would have said one more thing, I would have done this and this, and like you play it all through your head. I would love to reenact that. Adrenaline. Like, yeah, yeah, adrenaline, just so mad. Like I said some shit about like grabbing her head kill. and like pushing Dude. it against the wall and like all this. You shit. could black out during an adrenaline kill and can, like not even remember it afterwards. Can you do like? The, the on on your question, could you do like anything you wanted to? Because this is stupid, but like I've heard of like uh, people for the black market when they kill somebody, they like immediately extract their adrenal gland or something like that. They extract all their adrenaline. Well, I'm, I was just focusing on the. So can I suck the adrenaline out of somebody? You're taking a dark turn and making it a little bit morbid feeling now. Is it bad that I already have blueprints and plans for this? <laughs> right. I want to talk about it some more. But what Let if I take your kidney you. during the kill? I sell it on the black market, get the money. Do they grow a new kidney? Yeah, or? may I profit from this? Yes. Yeah. And can we do this again? Can we start a business? Yeah. yeah. What simulation do you have in the works? Yeah. Adrenaline. <laughs> Subscribe and find out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Damn I've already got a name for the company. Okay. I've, got, I've got an ink. Those are good answers. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. A plus <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome for the. Thanks for the look, like Steven Glansberg look, like you just had lunch by yourself. I was having applesauce. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I don't know if I said this one before, but I kind of made a little bit of a spin twist on it. So. Um, if animals could talk, which one would be the nicest and rudest? The nicest animal would probably be, it'd probably be like a like a cute little dog or a kitten. I feel like it would be the nice one. Dogs can be mean. Yeah, mm. puppy though. 
like a puppy, like a small puppy. Those puppies are so loving. They're licking you all over and, and stuff like that, or kittens are nice. But when I think also the rudest would be a full-grown cat because cats are fucking dicks. <laughs> Right, like the cat we used to have would only he was he was nice sometimes, but sometimes you would walk by and he would just bite your heel for no reason. Uh, he'd swipe at you, or the only thing like complaint I had would be like he would knock over. The only thing he would knock over would be like a glass of liquid if he left it out overnight. If it you was empty, he wouldn't. Three touch empty it. glasses and one full, and they'd knock the full. One just over. the full. Yeah. I tested it. I did that exact test. Yeah. I, I put stuff around, and he only knocked over the one that. That's had liquid definitely in. just a cat thing. Yeah, my cat. Yeah, did. I have cats, and I I just know. Yeah. Don't, leave liquid, don't leave liquid out. Yeah. That's just, you know, your own fault. So, what, what do you think? What would be the nicest animal you think? See, when you first asked the question. Now, remember, now remember, uh, they're speaking also. Yeah, them being able to speak. I thought you were saying the nicest and the rudest, like the one animal that would be super nice but also super rude. Well, that's a cat, no problem. Well, Easily. Eh. Easily. Yeah. Um, my, my first thought was a flamingo. But, oh. Because I feel like they would be very, uh, like, you would come up and they'd be like, oh my God, you look so nice. Like, that, your outfit looks great. I'm so glad you stopped wearing tight jeans. Like, <laughs> just that, that bit of like, it's a compliment, but then at the same time, they still have to jab at you. Like, yeah. I feel like that would be a flamingo. Those yeah. double-sided burns. Yeah. yeah. I think they'd be so rude, too, because they, they always they always stink. Every time you see a flamingo, it's like in a stinky situation. So they're almost like a... Uh, like a zoos? The worst part of the Dallas Aquarium is the flamingos. They smell so bad. And then when we lived in Florida... I, I know it never smelled well whenever I was around flamingos. Are there just wild flamingos in Florida? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, neighborhoods and stuff. Yeah. Like like uh, like neighborhoods have like a little pond and shit like that. Almost and, like there'll be blue herrings, cranes, these other little things, snakes, flamingos. Don't know turtles, turtles frogs, flamingos. gators. I've seen all that just in a regular neighborhood in Florida. Mm-hmm. At we apartments, did, I saw it in an apartment at a, complex. Yeah, and remember the, your apartment in Jacksonville. My apartment complex. We the lived pond in Florida. The back. Yeah. And we did door-to-door sales there, so we would go to brand new neighborhoods that were being built. So they would, if the neighborhood wasn't centered around a pond or a piece of water, they would build one, mm-hmm. and it would attract animals. I've seen alligators, I've seen flamingo, like you said, herrings, frogs, turtles, uh, drunk guys in beach shirts passed out with no, underage that, women, everything. That's what I was all kinds say, of no, animals. No wonder fucking people in Florida are going insane. Y'all got all kinds of wild. Yeah, life. you can have a fucking a, gator at your door just walking outside. I've seen it at people's doors, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw a guy in Florida once at a bar who only had one eye, but everybody in the bar knew who he was. Mm-hmm. And when I talked to him, <laughs> he only all he said all he ever said was puns about his one eye. Like he had, he had like a glass eye, and he would pop it out. Like after I met him, I was like, "Is that?" A, that's my friend. I was like, "Is that is that a real pirate?" And he's like, "No, it's just Florida. People do people Weird make shit. mistakes here. This happens." Yeah. But I I met the guy, and he would like come by. Like we're sitting at this table at this bar, and we're drinking, and he like he popped his eye out, and he set it in front of me. He goes, "I got my eye on you. I'm going to the bathroom," and I was like, "All right." I don't like that. Yeah, I didn't like it either, <laughs> but I also kind of loved it. It was hilarious. Yeah, it's one of those like fun to tell, but not fun to like experience at the time. You just have to like, keep reminding yourself, like when I tell other people about this, yeah. it's gonna be fucking fun, but it's not right now. We're also pissed drunk on rum because we're all, like at one of those beach bars, and I don't. Yeah. Know, I feel like that's the place to drink rum. If I drink it anywhere else, I just have heartburn. You don't get heartburn when you drink it there. For some reason, no. Mm. I don't know. I notice when I go on like a cruise or on vacation or something like that, like I, I can drink rum totally. Yeah. No problem. But yeah. I can't just sit around and drink rum and I cups. mix that shit here and I'm fucking laid up. Yeah. I'm done. A fucking Harper. sleeve of, of Tums and yeah. you're done. Do you have any more questions? You know, I do. And I, I made kind of a rendition on, on a, a murder, fuck, kill, kind of. It almost happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I, I, I made a little bit of a, a rendition. So this is going to be keep, cancel, or be a part of. Okay. Family Guy, Simpsons, or South Park? Keep, cancel, or be a part of? Like That's you're, a you're tough in that one, because I like all of those. You're in that world. Wait, it was Family Guy? Simpsons, and South Park. Okay. I think I'd want to be a part of... Uh, man, that's tough, because I want to be a part of all three of those. Shout out to Miles Francis for Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> to the uh, Before and After podcast. Here we go. No, that's not the Before and After. God damn it. No, no he's no. the... Uh, um, I have best darn diddly podcast. That's yeah. exactly what it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Don't listen to before and after. Those guys are jerks. Yes. <laughs> Except for the one episode with me. You know what? Oh, I just want to say before, you know why I say they're jerks? And I actually do love those guys. Yeah. But we started a rumor about them on the next episode after them with uh, Micah. And uh, mm-hmm. they still haven't said shit. That was like two months ago or a month ago. So you wonder, did the rumor take off? 
No, they know because nobody's listening. So I was going to say, oh, that's why I'm mad. Thanks, friends. Because they didn't know. Yeah. They didn't even know that we started a rumor about them being gay and coming out on our podcast. Okay. Mm. Yeah. See, I knew about the rumor. I knew yeah. exactly what you were talking about. Yeah, but they didn't say anything, and they were just on the podcast. You didn't listen to anything else. Thanks a lot. Well, maybe it's true. <laughs> maybe it's true. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe like, know, we don't care. If it is, good for them. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I would. Um, who would you be a part of? Um. Well, it keep, cancel, be a part of. This is the universe you live in. One stays, one goes, you're in the other one. I would want to keep South Park. South uh, Park stays on TV. Yeah, yeah. I would, no offense, I would cancel Simpsons. Samson. The Samsons. The, the Samsons. Samsons. Yeah. <laughs> I would cancel the Samsons, Samsons and make them all wear heels. Who falls <laughs> so, it, yeah, it, so, it sounds like you're practicing for Family Guy here, oh, yeah. being in that world. I want to yeah. talk to Samsons. <laughs> family Guy just seems like the easiest world to live in, honestly. Yeah. Uh, anything can happen. Yeah, anything. You recover. Yeah, nothing really bad happens. Like, the dog died, it came back. I would love it if when my dog dies, it just comes back two, three episodes later. Like, that'd be great. I wish I just had my dogs my ex-girlfriends have taken from me. <laughs> they two didn't even die. I just don't see them. We're yeah, two or three episodes are back. Like... Two or three episodes, I'm married again. <laughs> Niagara Falls, Johnny. Ni- <laughs> Niagara Falls. <laughs> I think, uh, I, I agree, keep South Park. I don't want to be a part of South Park because I feel like I would fucking punch Cartman. Okay. Even though I feel like I'm most like Cartman out of all the main characters. You would totally but, be Cartman. Yeah. But I, I think I'd rather live in The Simpsons because there's, I mean, there's drugs in both universes, but The Simpsons, they just kind of glaze over it. And then there's also, there's Fat Tony. It's got everything I want. I think I'd want to be in The Simpsons. Even though it's a child's cartoon, Homer's still always trying to fuck Marge. He's always trying to do something like that. So therefore, I think I'd be in The Simpsons. I don't know, man. Canceling I Family Guy? I don't want to cancel Family Guy, though. I love them both. I think I'd rather cancel you and keep all of them. Okay. That's a good answer. So we know your answer. Family Guy's gone. That sucks. I killed Brian. Wait, is it canceled up until this point, or it never existed? Gone. Wiped off existence. I'd rather it never exist so I don't have that memory of it then. Yeah. There you go. You'll yeah. feel content. And then maybe you'll think of making a show like that or something. They're all the same show, to be honest. With you. Simpsons, <laughs> did <it. laughs> Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it all first, Simpsons man. Simpsons did real life. They've done Damn shows. And, yeah, they did it first. They predicted... So much stuff. I have one more question. One more question? Let's yeah. See I'm looking for new stuff to watch. I started watching something interesting I would like to share with you guys, and then I would like to know what you're streaming. Just something interesting. I started watching Hollywood. What's Hollywood? Oh, I On saw Netflix. That. Excellent show. It's It takes place in uh, the days of like Rock Hudson and Gone with the Wind and Scarlett O'Hara and all that stuff. And it's actually... Well, is, is that like 60s, 40s, I, 30s? Uh, no, it's old Hollywood, like... 30, 40, or lots, no. Lots of ethnic oh, references. Yes. Back, back uh, when they were still doing 30s, blackface 40s. and throwing the N-word around all this the time. This is just after silent movies. They still call them the talkies. The people that were part of the silent era call them the talkies or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go down to the talkies. Say you have a cigarette. Listen, I marry? It, it's funny. There's sex. There's drama. It's hilarious. Uh, the, Jim Parsons is in it. A bunch of other people are in it, too. It's actually really good. I recommend watching it. It's on Netflix. I never told you before, before we answer that. I did watch Poughkeepsie Tapes. Did I tell you about that? No, you didn't tell me that. I had to it. Google it while yeah. I was watching to make sure it wasn't real <laughs> yeah. because it was really making my stomach hurt. I could tell that it was a mockumentary. I could I, tell it was. But at first, the, the first the first murder, I was like, that's pretty realistic and fucked up. And I was like, let me look this up. And then once I knew that it wasn't real, I was like, okay, now I'm okay with this. Yeah, yeah. What are you watching? Mm, uh, it's kind of embarrassing. The only things I've been watching during quarantine is uh, like The Rock of Love. The old Brett Michaels? Yeah, wow, I saw all of those. You've seen all of those too, haven't you? No, I've seen none of them. I've never seen Rock of Love. I <laughs> I'm not into wrestling and reality yeah. shit like you are. Oh, yeah, no, because I watched, I watched Flavor of Love, love. I Love New York, uh, uh, I, or Daisy I love, of Love, or whatever. I didn't, I didn't see that one. Was that, but Daisy, I remember they was did that, that Daisy one. Fuentes? No, no, it's Daisy from Rock of Love. Yeah. Yeah, she got her own reality. Didn't Frenchie have something? If y'all know who Daisy yeah, Fuentes uh, is, send me a DM. We need to hang out. Yeah, no, I've been watching all those early two thousands like dating reality shows okay and hey did you see the one show uh the influencer show have you seen this influencer oh, reality show this the circle circle circle. Yeah. circle i watched like the first episode of it and then kind of it got good. I watched oh, it like it got good. episode mm-hmm. five through eight with you guys and mm-hmm. i came home and, and we'll just watch the last two i didn't watch the beginning ones yeah it was good okay what about did you ever seen burning love 
It's just like it's a parody of all those other shows. It is, and it's been. hilarious. It's, it's a got show. everybody from okay. Paul Rudd. It's got. Uh, what was oh, you name it. It's got, it's got every, every young comedian all these funny ass people from like from like yeah. eight years ago. But the only one you can yeah. name is Paul Rudd. The rest of yeah. them you don't know who the fuck they are. Well, who's <laughs> who's the the, what, here's the twist. Who's that guy? Is that Michael Ian Black? Yes, it is. Yes. That's who it is. Mm-hmm. I knew a four name name, but I didn't know the rest. Everybody of them. who was on uh, that was four Party names. Down, American everybody there was a wa- uh, Wet Hot Summer. Is that what it's called? Yes. Oh, okay. People yeah. that were on that. People. Uh, a bunch Ron of people from that Party were, Down. There's a lot of people that were on Parks and Rec that are on that. Okay. It's worth watching. It was really. There are only fifteen minute episodes, but it's hard to find now. But the show was fucking hilarious. I'll, yes. I'll definitely have to check that out because well, I need to get off. I, I'm <laughs> glad. I'm glad that I shared that with you. But I'm still looking for something else. What's one other thing that you're watching? Uh, do 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 do. Give me something good. Something good. I think the last thing I watched was uh, B Star. It's an anime. Okay. It's on Netflix. It was really good. Uh, it's about animals. Uh, they're going to high school, obviously. But the animation's really good, and the storyline is, like, the predators are trying uh, to conform into regular society, like, Mm. not prey on the prey. Um, And it's, like, a couple generations removed from hunting and how they're all interacting with each other. It's basically, like, uh, comparing, like, black, like, the segregations of blacks, but put those as, like, beasts, but it kind of blurs the line Mm. there a little bit. It's not over, like overly handed of like this is what it's like to be segregated against that kind of thing yeah that's yeah. a strong message yeah, yeah. it's in yeah. it's really from well a cartoon done. that makes you feel like you're in trouble for watching it I can't watch anime anime I feel, yeah, I feel, anime like, no I will give oh, okay sorry. I can't do it I just feel like uh, uh, I feel like what's his name from uh, Catching a Predator or to Catch a Predator uh, Chris, Chris Hansen. Hansen. Chris Hansen. I feel like Chris Hansen and Guy Fieri are both going to show up anytime somebody puts on <laughs> anime. I don't know why they're together, but it's not fucking good if they are. If I watch anime by myself, I feel a little bit scared because the artwork is scary. It's like just a little bit scary sometimes. <laughs> it's scary. Like, no, like it's a little scary. Like it's just like a little creepy and weird and shit. I mean, like I watch I watch Castlevania and stuff like that, but like and I Castle- love is I that love with robots. the Muppets, but with the no Castlevania has no Muppets. It's it's an, it's animation. Oh, yeah. Mm. I don't like Muppets. They creep me out. Muppets and Victoria. No Muppets. Oh, Muppets. that's uh, the, the Sorcerer's Stone or some shit. Not Sorcerer's yeah. Stone. Was it Dark Stone? Something like that. Yeah. Dark, yeah. What Dark Crystal? Creep. Dark Crystal. Yeah. Dark Crystal, yeah. There it is. My roommates were watching it, and I was just like, ew, I don't know. I, 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 I like walked in the house from not being here. And I got home and saw they were watching that, and I just went straight to my room. Well, be, like, no. being a kid from the 80s, I saw that movie, the original one, in the 80s at the theater. So did I. And the, it, it gave me nightmares. Like, yeah. all, all those beak monster kind of type things. Like, yeah. It just scared the shit out of me. Any of that shit. Fuck that. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on to the open mic. You get, did you have more questions? Are you good with moving on? We're good. We're ready? All right, so we're doing. We're going through some changes here. We're transitioning. Uh, I'm actually going to be a woman next week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're, uh, what we do now, we're called the open mic, and while we're in this transition, it's either called the open mic or what's in the pot because I got this dirty-ass <laughs> pot filled with uh, topics. So we're just going to roundtable these. So mm-hmm. I'm going to let you draw first. You pull one out. Unless you have a topic you just want to throw at us and we'll try to riff on it. No, nah, we can go to the pot. Okay. What's in the pot? What's in the pot? Well, we can save it if the subjects suck. You can be like, all right, I got something for you yeah. guys. Oh, okay. you know, yeah. But, uh, and at the end of this, if you have any new jokes you want to do, you can do it. I have a couple of new ones that are stupid, but I'll do them here so I don't have to do them on stage. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Jinx. Flirting, good or bad? Okay. Flirting gone wrong. I can think of... I remember, you remember when we lived in Louisville, there was that, the, the American Mart, which had no Americans in it ever. Yeah. <laughs> Ironic. There was this gas station that you never buy gas from because it's expensive and watered down, but we'd stop there for like drinks or snacks, like, because it's right by the highway. Mm-hmm. And I remember one time, I, I had went in there like a few days prior to this time, but I was in there and I told the owner, he's like, hey, you got any suggestions for things I should get? And I was like, well, I'm usually on my way to work when I stop here. If you got, like, those little sausage biscuits you throw in the uh, in the microwave, I'd, I'd buy some of those. And he's like, oh, okay. So, like, three days later, I go there, and um, I, I buy my stuff, and I walk outside, and there's this beautiful girl walking in. And we made eye contact, and we flirted a little bit. And I was, like, I was literally about to say, let me get your phone number. But then his delivery guy, like, walks between us because we're right by the doors. And he goes, hey, he told me to tell you he got those sausage biscuits you like. <laughs> and then I'm he flirting with this chick. And she just looks at me and just turns around. And I was like, 
does he have them now? Because <laughs> I really want one now. She's like, I'm not dating yeah. the guy that's known for eating the sausage <laughs> biscuits. I don't, I don't want to, I can't date her anyways, because now I'm known as Sausage Biscuit. I'm LSB for now. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's and the forever. That's the cutest nickname. Like, can we remember a little Sausage Beast? <laughs> <laughs> it is, too. I wish I was somebody's Sausage Biscuit. That actually sounds great. Put it on your Tinder profile. Like, looking for Let someone me, to call me Sausage Biscuit. Let me be your Sausage Biscuit, baby. You can give her the kolache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you shorted down on the kolache. <laughs> oh, man. Have you ever had flirting go weird for you? Because oh, no. I know, like, comedy and stuff, guys afterwards, they want to heckle you and then come up to you and, like, try to hit on you sometimes. Yeah. I've no. heard that from other female, female comics. I always, yeah. have, I always have Ophi chicks and, like, drag queens trying to hit on me. Dude, I'm, I'm catnip for bigger country girls. I, like anytime I get on, like I'm not on any dating profiles now, but every time I, I am, I have black chicks like you. I have, too. and yeah, I'm, I love black chicks. Big though. time. I, and it's yeah. not like I'm segregating them, but I would like to segregate them all for myself. Yeah. But <laughs> I just, I, I'm, I'm into it. I'm into everything though. Life's a buffet. I want to taste some flavors. Go, go, <laughs> go, show. Uh, hey, shouty, what's your name? <laughs> I. There's like two different ones I kind of want to hit on. Uh, like after a show or something like that getting hit on the worst time I was on an open mic trying out some joke about like never having come during sex like a dude never making me come and all this and like some dude had shouted something in the audience like stupid. I can imagine the bad things got, yeah because I imagine the things I would think but not say because I know better yeah and uh, so I go like it was a shitty set regardless uh, go up to the bar afterwards to get a drink and the dude who had yelled something comes up to me at the bar and he was just like, yeah, like, you working on it, you're trying. And I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Thanks, man. Don't man. flatter me too much, <laughs> asshole. Yeah. Uh, and then he was just like, but that thing you said, no one's ever made you come before. Oh. He couldn't like, wait to bring that up. So he's, yeah, like, he's, like that meme. he's like that meme of the guy peeking behind the tree with the yellow suit, like, mm, yeah. you see right He's here. rubbing his hands like he's just only applying sanitizer for the rest of his life. That girl yeah. need to come. I'm going to help her out. <laughs> yeah, and like the rest of the joke is about like me coming for the first time afterwards. Like So it's a whole like arc of a joke, and I was just like, oh, no, like in my joke I said that yeah. I've come before. And he was just like, but I bet it's not this good. And like goes to like put his hand <laughs> on my shoulder and I would just like grab my drink and I'm like, well, it was nice talking to you. <laughs> and just like beeline out the door. Like, I. Don't so touch fucking, me, don't touch don't, me. Don't touch That's me. borderline assault, brother. Yeah. Is he a robot? Oh shit, it's happening. He's a sexual assault robot. robot. Hey. No, I've seen him at plenty open mics because he's a comic. He's like. Is a, it someone I know? He's like a fifth block comic at Dallas. Oh, I know all them. They buy weed too. I swear. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, if you don't want to tell me now, tell me after. Okay. I'm okay if you want to tell me I don't now. know his name. I just can describe him. Describe him. He's sad. <laughs> yeah, sad. Um, <laughs> he's like, Sounds like you know him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you knew it right off the top. Uh, You're like, yeah, it's Jerry. Hey, a scumbag knows <laughs> everybody. He's popular in all the communities, especially the lower ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, I can imagine all the things, and I bet it sounded like he just stopped listening when you said you never came, and he's like, "Yeah, I yeah. can make her come." He's like, "I got my mission for tonight." <laughs> like, it, yeah. Call me Jr. That stands for Jizz Rocket, baby. <laughs> See, that's the things I think but shouldn't say. And but I, this is your podcast, so go yeah. for it. Well, no, that's the, he's talking well, about no, his life. That's oh, the yeah. chemical. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. chemical imbalance. Though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, if I was out there in the world, I wouldn't say it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say it to well, a friend, but... I, okay, might. I'd say it. You might I have say a problem. It, yeah. I like to cross lines. You don't know where they are till you till you, till you're already past them. Yeah. Remember, you said on another episode today, if you had a horse stick, you'd show it to everybody, so, I mean... Yeah, but not like, hey, you suck on this. I'd just be like, do you believe this shit? I used to not be able to find it. Now I can't get away from it. Yeah. It's like a stalker. All right, so I'll drop a, dry a topic, or draw... I can't even talk about already. Drop. drop a topic. I'll drop a topic. Do you want to draw one? No. You can draw one. You don't Maybe. Draw one. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> don't put me on the spot like that. Yeah. Naked people. Ooh. I think it's the one you came up with. Naked people. Oh, why'd you have to single that out? I don't know, because I didn't, I don't, just so they know I don't have anything prepared for this, because I don't, <laughs> I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head that's scrambled, and that's just what I had. Okay. <laughs> naked people. Fair have you enough. ever just seen random naked people? Yeah. Where? Like at, uh, Party Cove on the water. Yeah, uh, the lake. out of the country concerts. at like places. Like, I've boats. seen in concerts girls that just concerts. take their top off and. I thought you were gonna say Party City. 
<laughs> I was just like, what party city are you going to? I'm trying but, to think. That's usually like high schoolers that work there. Yeah. Hey, anywhere you see naked people, <laughs> that's party city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Technically, right? Yeah. Um, I kind of have a funny naked story when I was younger. It was, uh, I remember I was like at camp and I remember like, I was so used to like every day we went swimming and it was swimming every day and we always went to like the dressing rooms and changed and all that stuff at the pool. And uh, I remember that uh, it, it was, we were at the lake this one time and I remember that I was talking to somebody like, and it was like boys and girls and shit, everyone and, and, and uh, counselors. I remember just being familiar with like being at the dressing room. I remember like just taking my bathing suit off and just, you know, like, uh, Put, changing my clothes, you know, yeah. and so I, I did that. You didn't shower, you were just changing? Yeah, but it was like with boys and girls and everybody everywhere, like, and I did that and like the instant that I did that, it like started off a reaction that a bunch of people like next to me started doing it too. And then I like pulled my clothes back up and like the it stopped after like three people, you know, but they were like, oh shit, and I was like, I felt like I was in the laundry. It's like you started to wave the, uh, and then you got shot in the head. <laughs> and I was like, no, don't wave! And it's then, disrespectful now. <laughs> and, and, and then later on when we got back to camp and it was like the end of the day and stuff, like, I remember somebody was like, hey, somebody heard that you pulled your pants down at the lake. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were in Chicago, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was a ghetto dude that was like, hey, you taking your little Pekka out, huh? <laughs> that's, what, that's what it was. It was like some black dude. And he was just like, hey, hey, the girls over here said they saw you pull out your booty at the lake, man. <laughs> <laughs> Here, draw, draw us a topic, even if you don't have anything for it. Right. I think you should at least draw us one. Okay. Yeah. I'll pour another shot. Does anybody else want a shot? All right. First yeah. kiss. Okay. So, uh, first kiss, yeah. I mean, like, you know, technically my first kiss, I mean, I, you know, I've been kind of pimping since, you know, pimping been since pimping been since pimping, like, since that the daycare before. I'm by the way. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, at, the, at the daycare before I was even going to kindergarten. So, I mean, I, I had a little girlfriends at the daycare I get a little kiss with. And, Ooh, little, little smooches. Yeah. Mm, and, baby. Um, it really sucks to daddy. peak in uh, preschool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I didn't. No, it was high school. I, I peaked in high school. You peaked with the daycare kids in high school? <laughs> That's a whole nother story. Cancel this man! <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I actually remember, like, uh, my first kiss particularly was, like, it was a weird one. It was at, uh, it was at a party, and it was a, a, it was a girl that was, um, she had been drinking a lot, and um, she... Uh, she just came over and kissed me, like French kissed me and shit, and I, and I was like, "Oh hell yeah!" She French kissed. She yeah. Frenched you? Mouth, tongue, uh, hairy everything. armpits, and yeah, all. And I'm like, "Hell yeah!" And it was a high school girl, and I was like, "Oh hell yeah!" You know, and uh, and then afterwards, everybody was like, "Oh, they're like, they're laughing. They're like, oh, she was just like fucking puking, dude. She was like fucking puking <laughs> all oh, over the no. place." I don't care. She's a queen. <laughs> <laughs> That's my princess, dude. Same. I since I was a little kid, I was always girl crazy. And, like, I, I, I don't knock, like, being gay. If I was gay, I'd be full-out gay. I'd be dressed in a rainbow right now. It would work just, financially well. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd feel like I'd have a lot more money if I was gay. Yeah. Uh, but I um, I just, I was always girl crazy. Like, uh, I had my first girlfriend. Her name, and if she's out there, please contact me. No, my first girlfriend in kindergarten. Her I'm name was now. her <laughs> name. She had the perfect name if she sold real estate. And I've told you this before. Her name was Dolores Powers. I still remember that. I thought you made up that name. That's for a my real cat. thing. No, we called your cat Dolores Powers when we put that wig on her because she looked like a like a tuna wholesaler. We go, I want to get a little briefcase so she can be like, "Hello, I'm Dolores. So you'll take four thousand pounds." Dolores Powers on the job. <laughs> her name was Dolores Powers, and I remember she gave me the first kiss. We were playing and she like came over to like a toy I was playing with and some of the other kids they were like they wouldn't share or whatever and I didn't give a shit I, everything I had was a hand-me-down so she's like oh I had a truck she goes that's a truck and I was like you want to play with it and then she kissed me and I was like you just gotta give bitches trucks that's all you gotta do <laughs> oh, shit. Just how, how old was trucks. Dolores Powers we were both five. Oh, okay it's it kindergarten yeah, but I've always, I remember my brother one time, he would, there was like girls in the neighborhood that were crazy about my brother and they would chase him around. And it was funny because they'd be like, Billy, is Billy home? They'd always say they shit like that. Billy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then the one would, she would, this one Robin, she would scream, Billy, let me see your Willie. She would stand in her driveway and yell yeah. that shit. 
And I remember he brought home this one chick because he was 10 years older than me. I was like seven. And he brought home this other chick that was, I thought she was hot. And I'm sitting on the, uh, he always taught me to like flirt with him and stuff. And I'm sitting on the couch with her and he like got up and I'm eating a popsicle. And I like put my hand on her leg. And she's like, she thought it was cute. And then he comes in and he like smacks the popsicle and it hits me on the tooth and I started crying. And that's still one of my most embarrassing moments ever because it was in front of a woman. That is. That seems really messed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go flirt with them, and I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, have, I had a up. friend who I used to watch him. Remember, I was friends with his younger brother. We were together in school, and he used to uh, like we we're friends together in school, not together together in school. Yeah, and uh, he. Um, we get it. You're not. <laughs> and that might be for you, but that's not for me. You know, but um, he um, uh, he would always do that too. Like he would bring girls over, and he'd tell his brother, he'd be like, "Hey," he'd be like, "Go over there and rub on her leg," and be like, "Hey, what's up, girl? What you doing?" And stuff like that. Yeah, you know. And, yeah, yeah. That's exactly and, and his brother would be like, no, I don't want to do that. And he'd be like, you're a fucking little pussy-ass piece of shit. Fucking go do it right now, you know? And, you and, sure and that's he would not laugh. me that told you that story? Yeah. No, 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 no. And he would go out and do that shit, and then he, and while she's do, while he's, like, out there just trying to make a pathetic attempt at doing it, he would come out there, and he'd be like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? When he comes out there, and like, smack him in the head and He shit. was using, <laughs> I just realized that now, he was using me to make himself look better. No, and but that was, same thing happened to you? Yeah. So that might be a big brother thing, maybe, that they do to, I don't know. But, like, what are your, like, what is your big brother and this dude? Like, if I was a chick and I came over and this, like, little boy sitting on me, your little brother sitting on me, I'd be like, oh, that's cute. And then, like, you come out and be like, oh, stop it. I would find that more adorable. You got a good relationship with your brother. Yeah. Him coming out and punching you in the mouth, I'd be like, I've made a mistake. No, he didn't punch me. <laughs> like, he didn't punch me in the mouth. I had, like, a popsicle, you know, oh, the, like, yeah. the push pop. Not a push pop, but the uh, the flavor ice. The yeah. Pops. And I'm eating it, and he just hits the end of the popsicle, and it hits me in the teeth. Teeth, yeah. And it was cold, and I, I was a seven-year-old pussy. So the guy was, in my yeah. story, he did beat up his brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I... Well, my brother still beat me up yeah. plenty of other times. In the age of cell phones, I would have been like, oh, my God, my mom's calling. I've got to go. This dude's yeah. insane. He's beating up a seven-year-old. Like, Yeah, this was 1989. Only doctors had pagers. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And only doctors. Yeah, they just couldn't they escape. Were They're like, well, this is my night. Like, yeah. <laughs> and doctors that wore pagers, because my doctor had a pager, even though he he had nothing going on in his life. He wore one that was like the size of, his li of like a, not the VCR. What was the other one before around the VCR time? Like the Beta? <laughs> a Betamax? <laughs> it looked like a Betamax. The big brown his... Motorola yeah. one? He yeah. had a big brown Motorola on his hip the whole yeah. time. It looked like it was charging his heart. I remember a friend of mine, I didn't have a pager, and I always wanted a pager real bad for Christmas or something like that, and I never got one. I had to buy it myself, but... I remember a friend of mine gave me an old pager. Still sour about it. He, I, he gave me an old pager, and it was the big brown Motorola box that you never saw. Like, everyone else had the thin little black one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I know. <laughs> she has the internet. She's seen a meme. On the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Will Smith had yes. a pager, and it was a little black one. And you wear it on the inside of your pant loop or in your pocket with just, yep. the, with just, the, with just the clicky part sticking out. I wear them on the outside, so you can see I had two pages. You can drop that shit off if you slide by something real quick or a balcony or a banister. And I had two. I didn't give a fuck. Drop it on the floor. <laughs> I, I broke a motherfucker dropping it on the floor. You know? And we, we've talked about this, how like you and friends would trade out parts of it, so you have multicolor pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And green, yeah. green, burgundy, yellow, Let blue. me get your clip, bro. Yeah. Let me just get the battery piece right here. Just cover the battery. It's a yellow. I'll give you a blue. All right. Cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. But uh, I had the, it was the brown box Motorola, and it was a piece of shit, and I was so embarrassed to fucking use it, and I was like, I'm not turning this on. Fuck this. <laughs> Fuck you just this. walked around like, no, this is my old one. My other one. My good one's in the other shop. One's in the shop. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, right? It's, it's a loner. No, I, I ended up in it, when I got a, a real pager, I just busted that shit. It's fun to break things. So. Yeah. Let's do the end part of this open mic. We can do at the end, you can do a joke. We prefer you don't do one from your set, but if you have a short one you want to do, I'm not going to say you can't. Yeah, I kind of figure uh, if you you know, we've been like in lockdown or and something stuff. you've been I mean, working I'm sure on. There's material. But if you got a new one, you can do that. Now. I'll go first. I have a few new ones. I try to have a, a new one or two each week, but I don't remember them, but I'm recording them, so I'll go back and listen and see if there's anything there. And since since I'm like done. an audience member, since I'm not a comedian, like I either will laugh or won't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that precursor. <laughs> yep. That doesn't make it creepy at all. Oh, pressure. Uh, but I'll, I'll go first. I'll do one. Here's here's one I, I just I wrote the other day, and it's not like done. Obviously, if you have any notes, let me know. But I'm getting in, I'm like late to the fad of, of true crime and stuff. Like I love true crime podcasts and Netflix shows and all that. But it's getting to the point where I'm picking up some of the habits. Uh, from watching these things like precursors like the other day I was in a bad area I was like in the hood and I was in this gas station and I plucked out a few chin hairs 
and I was in the bathroom, and I plucked out a few chin hairs and a few pubes to leave some evidence, just in case, like, if I do go missing, they'll have a, a, a trail of breadcrumbs to find me from. And I, like, peed on the floor a little bit. I'm like, there's, like, three different DNAs in here. You guys will find me, right? <laughs> like, this is okay. And just It's like my breadcrumb. It's, I just want to leave something behind so they can find me. Yeah. I've had that same uh, thought before because I'm really into true crime, and there's been times where I'm, like, brushing out my hair, and, like, my hair will fall to the ground and be like, yes. If, any, <laughs> if anyone's looking for me. Let me wrap it just, around this pack of Twix just in yeah. case. I've left but, evidence. But then there's also been times, like, I think maybe if you add this in, <clears> like, <throat> where I've been thinking of that. Like, I've brushed my hair out and something falls to the ground. I'm like, oh, God, I don't want anyone to know I've been here. <laughs> like, yeah, I, even if I do, <laughs> like, get murdered, I want them to skip over this or yeah. just not find my body. I even said, too, that, um, you know, if... I've mentioned this to him before. Yeah, started. It, it just if uh, if anybody says anything about, you know, like, uh, DNA being found or something, uh, what, 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 if, what if something happened yeah. in that bathroom? Yeah, and what, what if I just now incriminated myself? Like, you, they, we would have never guessed you raped that crackhead in the bathroom. So, yeah. so in, I, was th- I was thinking about it all this time. It can end up, it can end up being um, your alibi, or it can end up being, you know, your demise if something fucked up happened there. Yeah, yeah. it could. So don't leave pubes and chin hairs. Well, I'm still going to leave pubes. I've always done that case. as a tradition. So I, do you anticipate <laughs> on being kidnapped or something? Maybe, dude. I I wear I wear a digital Galaxy Watch as I'll display for you guys. Yeah, I got it for know. 99 cents when I upgraded my phone like four years ago, <laughs> and. People always assume I either work where I am or I own the place. And it's probably the Italian pompadour haircut I have. I get that a lot. But, um, yeah. I would just uh, also, like, a thing you could add in is, like, with the evidence, is it going to be in to help finding you've been murdered or helping them convict you of a murder? Yeah. Um, Look at who you are. And yeah. see which one that would be, because like just looking at me, I would be the one getting murdered. You would be the one getting convicted of my murder. <laughs> like, I would like a Larry David moment there. I would get like that fucking. I'd just get. I'd get convicted of murder. Mm-hmm. Like, he's the only white guy who's been here in months. <laughs> see if I get murdered, they're gonna play this podcast and they're gonna like at this part be like, see, he said, right he there. said he'd yeah, do it. Right there. <laughs> hey, that's three hots in a cot. That's guaranteed lunch, baby. Hey. <laughs> you don't gotta think for yourself no more. Uh, do you have any new jokes you haven't done on stage yet or anything you want to pitch mm. out, workshop, whatever? I mean, I've had, like, little shit. I've been writing a lot about, like, corona and being in quarantine, and I don't actually want to I try to block those. that stuff out. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's why I don't do, like, a lot of topical stuff because, yeah, it's funny right now. I would like to write with a broad stroke. I, I would, I would like to hear later. if you have a funny But if you have corona. any new corona I, I like thing, the, even if it's just a short thought or just something funny. My only thing is... Uh, I like, have one after that. Well, yeah. me and my boyfriend, or my ex, uh, we live with each other during corona. He's still uh, your boyfriend. You're just arguing right now. Yeah, pretty much. Well, that's what uh, <laughs> the joke is. Uh, I don't know if we're like actually talking about getting back together or if this what's the, like Stockholm Syndrome like feels like. <laughs> <laughs> like once I'm allowed to leave, am I really going to feel like, he's a good guy? Wait like, twice <laughs> if you need help right now. <laughs> right? Like, like, you might only actually just still be interested because you're forced to be together, you know? Like, you feel that way. Like, yeah. maybe you feel like he made up all this corona stuff just to keep you indoors. Yeah, I've been, like, checking the news, <laughs> making sure I don't, like, recognize anyone in the background. Like, he's not filming it. <laughs> this ain't real. I thought of this uh, corona thing. I was going to post it, but I never did. But, uh... I'll leave. I, I don't like. I think it's dumb that t- we are in Texas as the first state opening up, and uh, I, don't, I think it's too soon for everything to open up. This is my policy. I'll leave my house when it's okay to open hot sauce packets with my mouth again. Other than that, I'll be home. I mean, yeah. people are still doing it. Yeah, the dumb, ones. Still the licking, dumb ones. Licking shit, touching no. shit, being stupid. There's I've got th- I've gotten so much hot sauce in my thumbnail to where it burns because <laughs> I cut too much of my nail off, and there's like a little cut there. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not putting this in my mouth. I, like, wash things when I come home like a psychopath. I wash a water bottle under the sink before I even will put my mouth on it. You know, this goes all the way back to our very first episode. I mean, I just feel like I have my own, like, kind of natural, like, microbial and bacterial, like, yeah. kind of shield. You don't shower for weeks at a time, so nah, your body don't, builds don't, a don't shield. Don't give me too much credit. Months. You know, but no. <laughs> my water bill was only $80 last month. Yeah, great. his water bill was only $80 yeah. for his whole life because he's never bathed. <laughs> No, it's just I, I feel like I have just my natural defense here. I mean, when I see everybody at Walmart having a mask over their face, I'm like, cool. You guys are all covered. I'm, I'm good. 
I'm not going above and beyond. Like, if I get it, like, I feel like if I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. If I don't, I don't. That kind of thing. Well, you're young and you're probably, Yeah, probably that's, right. I have that privilege. Yeah. Um, but, like, I'm not going out there and licking doorknobs. Like, I'm coming home and Why? washing my hands. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> sure. And, and I think it's to some degree that, I mean, it should have already been the idea. Just it, I think it's just reinstilling it in society that... Um, just wash your fucking hands. Be a little bit cleaner. Just be a little bit cleaner when you're out in public. You know what I mean? Think about the next guy next to you. Yeah. You know I mean? Just come on. I got another joke I'll I'll run past you. I'd like to get your perspective on it. Uh, And also, by the way, I'd like to mention, you're the first uh, female comic or female in general we've had on the podcast. Woohoo! And I'm glad you're here. And like I've been, I've invited a few different ones, yeah. and uh, not to like make them sound like they're like mm-hmm. baseball cards you can trade. The other ones, <laughs> the other one in town, the disposable no, ones. But a lot of them like they cancel last minute, and I get it. I don't hold, harbor any bad feelings because Corona times and all that. But sure. uh, I'm glad we bagged one. We got one. No, I'm just we, I can't leave. Please help. But uh, here's the other one I was working on. Like uh, I'm kind of an old school guy. Maybe it's the mafia movies I watch. Maybe. maybe it's just I'm a little bit older. Now I don't want to be that old guy. It's like all oh, these millennials or whatever. But I just I feel like all the the differences is just that I have a little more class. Like for instance, if I have a one night stand with a girl, I feel like a lot of these people and I would do this like they borrow money from them or make the girl buy her own Plan B pill. Like where's the class in that, right? I don't do that. I take the money out of her purse and go get it while she's asleep. So much easier. <laughs> Right? God bless you. Yeah. And then I don't even let them know they're killing a baby. I'll, like, crush it up and put it in their orange juice or something in the morning. You're like, no, it's not roofies. Yeah. It's not roofies. I, that line ruined me one time. You remember that. <laughs> <laughs> me, Jason had bought these when he was single. Wasn't married or anything. Mm-hmm. When he was single, we went out to the bar. We met these two girls. We're having a great time making jokes, laughing. And we were like, hey, we live right over here. We're going to go smoke weed. It was, look, it was house. looking to be a good night. Yeah, and we were like, we're going to go home and smoke weed. The bar's closed. And they're like, hey, can we come? And we're like, yes. Gotcha, bitch. We trapped you. <laughs> you and by yeah. yourselves. We're not yeah, exactly. Now. I didn't even have to beg you this time. You decided to. No, but they were like, yeah, let's come. And me and the girl that I was joking with and that I was talking to, we were joking back and forth. And she kept doing like rape jokes. Like she was doing rape jokes and roofy jokes. So we get there, and I'm trying to be all slick, and they're like, oh, we're kind of thirsty. I was like, oh, let me get you a drink, you know. And I get the drinks, and I carry it out to them because we're all, they were outside. And I was like, here you go. It's roofie free. And the girl that's been making rape jokes and roofie jokes all night freaks out on me and starts yelling. She got serious. She was just like, how dare you fucking say that? Yeah, and she's like, my friend has been raped. I was like, you did like nine rape jokes on the ride over here. I was just joking. It's funny. Yeah. It was, was actually like, funny. It was super funny. Yeah, and I was like, I said roofie free. <laughs> <laughs> because 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 I was I remember witnessing it. We, we had to like tiptoe around. Like she was saying those as joke jokingly, but you could tell she kind of had a screw loose. And so she the way she was just telling the stories about this, she was like, okay, it's kind of weird. You're talking about this whole bunch. And so you got the drinks, and then you're like, here you go, roofie free. <laughs> I wonder if it was like a moment of clarity for her because like I've done shit like as a woman that I probably shouldn't like going back yeah. to like a dude's house to smoke weed or something and I have that moment of clarity being like fuck <laughs> this is how it happens he only like, thinks of one thing now yeah, I have and, to get out of here yeah, she, and, she took it out on you for sure it was like oh, yeah, no she, she, like, she made all the jokes that you she realized she'd gone back to this apartment she doesn't know who you are it you was a house her, uh, sorry we had an uh, above ground pool goddamn. a it. quarter but, acre of land <laughs> yeah I'm so sorry they went back to your very nice place. Um, and built, was, built in yeah. 55. Yeah. And it was like the last straw was you making her drink and then like you handing it to her, you saying that <laughs> reminded her of like, I have checked off so many boxes, I'm going to get raped tonight. Like, you know what? I didn't really think about it like that. That's an excellent perspective. I, I bet that. you that did happen. But she wasn't going to get raped. She was going to get schmoozed and boozed. That's yeah. all. No, it was going to be willing yeah. to a degree. Yeah. yeah. And if not willing, that's fine. I will go to sleep. Yeah. And let her rape me. <laughs> and I'll leave $20 in the morning. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'll give her 10 oh. <laughs> Do you have any other new jokes, or should I do Is it my um, turn? Who's turn? I'm kind of I drunk and I know. I think it's my turn, just because, like, I was thinking, it's one I've done on stage maybe once or twice, but I uh, I don't know where to go with it, so we're, like, yeah, we'll talk. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's about... <clears throat> Kind of with the true crime thing, when I was pregnant, uh, I've always loved true crime, but when I was pregnant, I had only watched, like, I binge watched a bunch of stuff about pregnant women getting kidnapped and their babies being stolen. And, like, 
for the like Ooh. yeah it's just yeah. like why watch this while you're pregnant <laughs> and so at one point um they, they call it hey you want to cry yeah it's like you want to like freak the fuck out um but i've been like i had been watching that so i got super paranoid and i would like i went to walmart one time i remember and this dude followed me down like one or two aisles and i was like oh shit this is when it's gonna happen he's gonna try <laughs> to like kidnap me and take my baby <laughs> and, and not so, a little tupperware aisle they got gallon freezer bags <laughs> and my solution to it was is uh if he's following me, I'll just look up self-defense videos on YouTube and, like, learn up that yeah. he's, like, going to try to attack me. But I don't have headphones or anything, so I'm just walking through Walmart, eight months <laughs> pregnant, with just, like, self-defense videos playing on my phone <laughs> with this dude walking behind me being like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm not going to try to kidnap you. this guy you. can't take a hint, you might as well play it over the loudspeaker. <laughs> right. Jesus. Maybe go towards, like, the athletic section and get a bat. <laughs> Yeah, or go, yeah, go over to the hunting section and get a knife. Just start looking at guns at Walmart, just like, shh, yeah, this is nice. You want to get rid of them? Go to the jewelry section and look at wedding rings. <laughs> just look at no, I'm done. Have a good night. <laughs> that was good. Uh, let's move on. We're getting uh, kind of tight on time. Let's do some true crime. curiosity have you seen twin peaks mm -mm. no okay i know you have goddamn millennial no. yeah <laughs> so there's this has nothing to do with twin peaks just you know i was just curious uh mysterious okay. ghost <laughs> ironically <laughs> mysterious ghost voice turns out to be a guy in a chimney this just happened recently this was santa yeah this was i mean this was reported uh just the 6th of april just 2020 so uh, a guy a guy named brad sap thought that he heard a mysterious uh, whisper saying brad sap yeah, that's his name He's a sap. Brad Sap. It's not like something Jewish people call you. Ah, he's a sap. Yeah. Well, I would say you're that's... You're a sad sap? Yeah, like you're, yeah. A, you, sad. Like you're a sucker. Oh, that's like that's like 30s talk, right? Like, oh, let me get a sandwich. You want cigarettes? Of course I want cigarettes. No, yeah, a sad here. sap. He's a real sad sap. Oh, he's a real there. sad sap. He's a real sack of shit. So I heard somebody whispering down the chimney saying, get out of here. Get out of here. Like that. Down the chimney. Uh, he thought he was going crazy, and so he explained that he started looking, like, all around, like, just checking all through the house and stuff. And uh, his wife teased him, saying that there was, like, you know, there must be a ghost or something like that here in the house, honey. You know, what were you going like to say? I was going to say, what if that's the dude in the chimney? He's not trying to be, like, creepy or a ghost. He's, like, motivating himself. He's like, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, wiggle your big toe. Like, yeah. like, he he thought it'd be a good idea to be an actual Santa, and he's like, it's dirty in here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm get, stuck. Get out of here. Get the little engine that could. <laughs> you know what? Like leave. There's a pretty good chance that you might be right, because his wife, Carrie, teased him that the voice must be a ghost. But about nine hours later, at 10 a.m., she received a scare when she heard a man yelling for help inside the chimney. He was yelling for help. He's like, I, I can't get out. Uh, to quote him exactly, he said, I'm in the chimney. I need help. I can't get out. It sounds like somebody gave Santa spaghetti. Now he's full from all the pasta. <laughs> right. So the thing that I asked about Twin Peaks before is because he looks like this. That's what he looked like. He looks like a real-life rickety cricket. We're going to post this picture on our social media uh, which I'll tell you guys at the end where it is, but just search our name. You'll fucking find it. Yeah. Oh, also, you're not listening, so it doesn't matter. If anyone did listen to Twin <laughs> Peaks, I think he looks like one of the woodsmen on Twin Peaks. He looks like that one woodsman, like if you guys did see Twin Peaks, the one. The one Got a light. light. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, um, he was also naked, by the way. Well, how else do you get in a chair? Oh, <laughs> you can't go down there with your clothes on. I don't did want to get say... my, my fine suit all day. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I get in here with my pinstripes? <laughs> so, this guy was a 29-year-old. He's one of your folks. So <laughs> <laughs> You made young people. So, you like, sound like you're no. racist against young people. <laughs> right. And that guy that you showed me a picture of is 29 years old. Yeah, but, he, he, has, but, he, has, but he has soot. He has soot on him. Okay. okay he has soot. He looks older. He has long hair. He's a goddamn long hair. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so his name is Jordan Kajewski. There's more beer if you want. Mm -hmm. Feel free. He called out saying that he was uh, he's trying to get out of the chimney, and you know he said that uh, he got stuck in there. And the guy said that she heard the voice, and she, but she said she thought she was going crazy when she heard his voice. That's a that's a white man's R. Kelly. I'm in the closet. I'm in the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> the Asian guy's in your rice bowl. I'm oh, sorry, man. I couldn't help it. But they're killing us right now. Hornets, diseases, come on. 
So here's what Kajuski ended up saying. I like that you just glazed over. We're not going to touch on. I don't want to touch this racism. I'm just kind of wrapping up the story here, too, at the same time. So Kajuski said that his story is he fell in playing hide and seek. (laughs) From who? These people didn't know you were there. He was playing maybe an international level of hide and seek. You can't hide in someone else's house. (laughs) That's breaking (laughs) in, or you asshole. There's a name to it. That's against the rules. That's (laughs) illegal. All the other kids on the block now have a new rule. It's like, all right, you can't hide in your own house. You can't hide here. You can't hide in strangers' chimneys. Also, Nothing inside houses. You can't hide in my girlfriend's underwear drawer anymore, or other. Okay, Tom. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> So this guy stuck by his, hi- his hide-and-seek story. Uh, the people called 911. Rescue workers came out. They got him. They arrest him for trespassing. Um, pff, I mean, nobody would comment from the police because it, it was just such a weird situation. Um, he has no clue why the guy was naked or in his chimney. And, I mean, he says he probably is not going to follow through if he doesn't have to going to court to figure anything out. It's just whatever. <laughs> just let him find another <laughs> yeah. hole to crawl into. Yeah. It was, maybe it was the guy from Alice in Chains. Been? Twin Peaks. Yeah. He, he didn't die. <laughs> he just found another hole to dig himself into. Yeah. That sounded better in my head. I had a joke for it, but it just disappeared. I'm kind of drunk now. <laughs> well, I mean, you're three shots in, right? Four. I think, actually, I think this is the fifth one. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, why would you get naked and get in someone's chimney and be like, no, nah, it's hide and seek, bro. So you can slide fun. down <laughs> like all the ash and shit and get all the Sliver down up. like an ash snake. <laughs> Well, okay, I was reading a few stories about, like, because uh, my first thought is he's on meth. Like, <laughs> Easily. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Definitely. I thought that was assumed. I figured we all oh, knew yeah, that. Oh, yeah, all knew that. Yeah. But I like the meth stories of people, like, meth heads breaking into people's houses and just cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> helpful meth heads. Yeah. yeah. Like, but he, he watched Mary Poppins, and he was like, everyone else is doing the dishes. I'm going to sweep the chimney. <laughs> he was singing the song, and then he was like, fuck. <laughs> Thanks, dick. Right? Rickety, crickety, swippity. What an asshole. Yeah. Maybe he wanted to get, like, all black, like, you know, the picture I showed you of the Twin Peaks guy. Maybe he wanted to just be black from yeah. head to toe. Or maybe he needed a reason to have black face, but he didn't want to show that he actually did it himself. But like, no, it's an accident. It's a political thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The links it's always the man. Didn't you say one of the other stories you had was Eminem's house got broken into? Yeah, this was the other story that I had. So this literally just happened recently. So uh, Eminem was forced to confront a home intruder while his security guards were sleeping. <laughs> they tell him to be quiet and not wake up a security. <laughs> <laughs> they work long shifts. Do they wake him and him up when they're going to sleep? Just like, hey, it's your turn. <laughs> like, I'm wait. sorry, Marshall. These guys get very out your closet. They get very, very tired in that house. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I know I said it like Balky from. <laughs> yeah, you sound like Balky from Perfect yeah. Strangers. Also, if you guys know who Balky is from Perfect Strangers or what Perfect Strangers is, send us a DM. Yeah. How about even if you don't know who Balky is, send us a DM. Yeah. We'll see what happens there. Yeah, just listen. Like, please. <laughs> I'm trying hard. I'm trying really hard. Is it good? Is it good yet? All right. Uh, so anyways. Here's the full story. 26-year-old man by the name of David Matthew Hughes. Well, Matthew David Hughes. I read that backwards. Reportedly uh, broken Sounds down. Sounds like another version of Marshall Mathers. Ironically. Uh, he broke into Eminem's Michigan home, and he was uh, he used a paving stone to smash a kitchen window and break in the house about 4 a.m. Ironically, Eminem's security team was sleeping because they also, I guess, live on premises. What time was this? 4 a.m. Well, that's like when you need the security. I don't need it at 4 p.m. Well, maybe his house actually does have a guard shack, and I wonder if they were, like, feet kicked up and all. Like, Nobody, s- nobody's going to rim. Nobody's going to rob Slim Shady. I mean, he's the real Slim Shady. He's All right, well, up. as a result, since it, since this guy had broken in, he became he came face-to-face with Marshall right there in the house. Uh, it was in the living room, and an alarm had started to go off, and M started yelling for security immediately, who, it says, woke up and ended up rushing the guy and beating the shit out of him and holding him until the police arrived. Like, what? Just hold on to him until I have my coffee, bro. I just woke up. So I mean, had to be like, yo, what the fuck you doing here? And shit, you know, like, fucking trying to be tough and shit. Like, oh, shit, get these guys. Hey, get these guys. <laughs> they robbing and bobbing. Did you rap to him? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just imagine him and him just being like, scary, scary, oh my God. <laughs> I don't believe the story's true unless one of his friends shot himself in the leg. <laughs> Jenner well, Bob. Ironically, this guy, he was taken quickly into custody and booked on charges of uh, two felonies, first degree home invasion and uh, malicious destruction of a building. Uh, he's Malicious? 
Did he piss okay. on the window before he broke it? Well, I guess because he had bad intentions coming in is what they determined. Let me ask, did this robber clean out Eminem's closet for him? Because <laughs> I've heard that he's been doing that for a while. He's going to need to apologize to his mother. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Kim Basinger. <laughs> you were in my movie and it sucked. No, I'm just kidding. I actually like the Hate Mile movie. It says that he's still in uh, he's still in jail on a fifty thousand dollar bond. Uh, they they believe that he was actually not really there to steal anything. He just wanted a chance to talk to the rap god. Is what it says. So in the article. what did he talk to him? I mean, you, I mean, if you get in front of Eminem and you just start babbling of, uh, at one point, be like, hey man, you can call the cops. That's fine. But just listen to what I have to say. Go ahead and call him right now. Okay. So I understand that being a point. Do you um, have, Do you have a point to that? Well, I. I would love it at like his hearing or like at the court case them being like, so how do you plead? And it's like fucking happy. I got to meet the number one, the rap god, like the guy that broke it. He's just like, it was fucking it. worth it. It was worth it. Hell yeah! Oh shit! Like a year and six months fucking probation. God damn. Eighteen months, Slim. No. For real? Can I do weekends? I stood outside your concert for seven <laughs> hours with my little brother. You just passed right by. What if it's Stan? That's fucked up. Stan showed up. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, this is my life. <laughs> this is my life. Stop talking about it. I've profited nothing. Oh, it was you. <laughs> Damn. No, like here's so okay. So ironically, we mentioned meth was involved before, and let's remember this is Michigan. Well, yeah, I think the real crime here is that Eminem still lives in Michigan. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sure it's probably not Eight Mile in Detroit. That's for goddamn. Well, sure. yeah, he probably yeah. bought the whole Eight Mile. So here's what the guy looks like. Is that Eminem? <laughs> <laughs> we'll post this up on our social media. Somebody man. grab the clippers. The fucking beard's weird, right? That guy. That guy looks like if you, if you like gave him a buzz cut, he'd have a lumpy head. I'm surprised they like let him still keep on his, top and round on the sides. They still let him keep his coronavirus mask. While he took the bug shot. They gave that to him. They picked him up without one. They're oh, like, maybe they're like, hey, pull it down, man. He looks like even without the virus going on, his breath is bad enough for the cops to be like, you got to wear this mask, bro. Oh, see, I was going to say, I can't believe my brother didn't tell me he was going to go meet Eminem. Right? <laughs> <laughs> see? There you go. Does that look like your brother? <laughs> yeah, definitely does. <laughs> I don't trust him. Never met him. Is he, <laughs> is, is he nice and successful in life? Oh, yeah, good. check him out on SoundCloud. Um, there you go. Yeah. There Shout you go. him out if you want. Oh, Polly 2D. Uh, SoundCloud, iTunes. Poly Too Deep? Poly Too Deep. That makes me think of, do you remember In Too Deep? Absolutely. You remember? Back that was to one the of, hotel. Yeah, back to the hotel. Bah, nah, 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 nah. That's, that's an old rap thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'll get it, maybe. I like that me and Jason will probably start a movie called Grumpy Old Men, and it's just dudes with tattoos that are still grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an updated version of Walter Matthau. Like Walter Matthau with a gold chain and a teardrop tattoo. But all things considered, we have a reason to be grumpy. Yeah. We have a reason, goddammit. Yeah, bold. I'm I said GD twice on this, man. Did you say G D why did you say GD? I don't want to say it three times. You don't want to say goddamn? Yeah. Goddamn. I just said it three that. times. Is Beetlejuice gonna show up now? I don't know. I hope so. Why don't you say it a third time and see what finds out? I did. I said three, I'll say it four times. Be I almost said Beetlejuice. <laughs> I said Beetlejuice. Ah, oh, I said it three times. Nah, it's, it's not like you said Beetlejuice that time. It's just like, what's the one of That does seem more appropriate for Mike, ironically. Yeah, Beetlejuice shows up and he just steals all your bread. <laughs> That's all he does. Let me take your bread. What else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just complains about your house. Just like, oh, you don't want to have any of that. Oh, there's a draft here. You leak it over here. It's costing you $25 a month. Oh, my house is very nice. Yours is very bad. You should fix it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I live here because I can't afford to fix a house. <laughs> this was fun. I'm glad you came. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. Feel free to look us up. Actually, before you look us up, where is your social media? Go ahead and shout all that out where they can find you at and some of your... Do you have any comedy stuff anywhere? YouTubes, anything? I have comedy stuff on YouTube, um, but... I um, never promote my YouTube comedy stuff because yeah, it's... Yeah, no. um, but It's on, all private. I don't know why. Yeah. I just have it on there to send to festivals, but you can find me on Facebook, uh, Caitlin Hassanar. Instagram is won't tiptoe about, and then Instagram, I forgot my handle on Instagram. I don't use social media very often, so if you okay. find me somewhere, it's not going to matter. No, but all three of our listeners are in this room. So yeah, so, <laughs> so I'm going to listen to this We're episode again and be like, how do I find her? Yeah. <laughs> Create We're another profile and then follow yourself. Yeah. We're already friends on social media, so I mean, yeah. Jason, you just go to my friends' list. You'll find me somewhere. Yeah. I'll be around. Uh, fucked up last name you'll find yeah, me but yeah. you can find my personal page uh, Mikey B the comedian on Instagram but look us up you can find us through our fan page or through our podcast page on Instagram that's going to be at the open mic podcast Mike is spelled like the name M-I-K-E what's that Twitter handle Jason open mic 5000 
I had to let him say something so I could burp at some second. <laughs> you can also search us on Facebook, the same, uh, the Open Mic Podcast, M I K E. And uh, this was a lot of fun. Thanks for coming, Caitlin. And uh, that's it. We're out.